All right, guys, well, I did kind of flub the first part of this video, but we have gone ahead and installed the drain plug. That is at 21 foot pounds, just the other side of 250 inch pounds. And the oil filter has been torqued down to about 12 and a half foot pounds or roughly 150 inch pounds. Uh, by the way, the manual calls for 17 Newton meters. So we had to bust out the fancy wrenches for that using a 901 filter socket. I've gone ahead and filled the crankcase full of oil. We did pre-lube, or at least pre-fill, I should say, that filter uh, just a little bit. Can't put too much in there because you know, it's at a 90 and it'll all pour out, right? So anyway, uh, let's see what that oil level looks like before we fire up. Okay, guys, so before we fire this thing up, so the oil still hasn't filled the filter completely. There's a little bit of oil in there, but not a ton. You can see that it comes up to the top mark, and that is with four quarts of 10W40. All right, so 536 miles. Let's go ahead and fire up. So just fired it up, getting oil flowing. It'll take a hot minute for that oil to drain back into the crankcase to give you guys a solid showing of what it turns out to be. But I bet you it probably is still, yeah, it's still going to be all up in there. So it'll drain back and it's still a little bit thick. So it's going to take a little bit, but you saw where it was. It's all sitting around the top side of the engine. It's one of the reasons why you don't want to wick a motor up when it's cold yeah, because you got thick oil that's still coating other parts that didn't all the way back at the sump yet. It's still got good oil pressure, don't get me wrong, but always good to let them warm up a little bit before you get you know, a little bit uh, naughty with it. All right, guys, so just going through and kind of cleaning up, making sure there's no drips, no leaks, no nothing like that. You might be able to hear it's still kind of a tick, tick, tick in of it cooling off. Just kind of let it fire up, let the oil flow around. Check the uh, check the tension on this chain. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Give you an idea for how I do this. <clears throat> you see about where that 130 mark is. We're looking for a number that's around 30 to 40 millimeters. That's about the middle. Let's see. just taken right in the middle of that link. So there is 10, 20, right at 30 millimeters of slag. Bring it in just a little bit more. Maybe you can see this a little bit better. Right here. So 10, 20, 30, oh, right at 30, just the other side of 30 millimeters. Good thing about this is that I'm not having to adjust the chain all the time, it seems like, anymore. Uh, early on, I was adjusting this chain. I think this would be the fourth time if I adjust it. If you keep the stock can, though, there's a little bit of a, little bit of a cheat code here. This chain, if it starts to slack pretty low and it gets to the bottom part of that, well, what I'm pretty sure was an afterthought indentation to that muffler, <laughs> You can imagine that chain was probably hitting it on some prototyping. Anyway, uh, when it gets to that point, it's definitely needing, a, needing the tightening. But if you, uh, if you tighten it up to just shy of like a length's depth from the top of that muffler, you'll be pretty much within spec. Eh, if you can just barely see the top of it. There you go. See what I'm saying? Like right here. Anyway, hopefully that helps. Uh, if you don't have a gauge or you're just trying to, you know, feel it by hand. Most guys just get in here and flap it around. If it looks right, it's good. And that's where we're at on the ticks. So just barely, barely aft of the center hash mark, which is where it comes from the factory. Be surprised how much slack that little bit amount actually takes up. But there you go, guys. 
chronicling the maintenance on this Z900RS for you. Hopefully this is helping you out. Again, you're looking at 21 foot-pounds for the drain plug, about 12 and a half for the filter. Yes, we are using a new crush washer. Four quarts of 10W40 motorcycle oils. Don't forget to check your chain. Oh yeah, and your tire pressures too. I am running 40 in the rear, 36 front on this bike, which seems to be about what the bike tends to like. At least so far in some of the cooler weather, it has been doing just fine. So there you go, guys. There's your quick rundown of the 500-ish mile maintenance. And there's some other stuff I've done to the bike. I've got the black anodized heel guards. I did black out the passenger pegs also. And those bar end mirrors, which I think that these bikes should have come with from the factory because that bikini mirror plus regular mirrors equals a lot of buffeting. Come on, Kawasaki, you can do better than that. I cannot wait for my exhaust to get here. That stock exhaust hanging down like that is just driving me nuts. Come on, Brox, get with it. Not only do I want the sound, it's mainly for the aesthetic. All right, I think now that's a wrap, unless I find something else I can find to talk about on this thing. Okay, so I found one more thing, and we were just talking about that G2 throttle. You know, again, one of the reasons why I put it on this bike, look how little play there is in that throttle with those little Durlin bushings that go on the, uh, on the inside of the case here. Oh, it's so nice, but it does allow you to run a bar and mirror without any fear of anything rubbing against it. Anyway, G2 throttle for the win. It is a quick throttle and I love it on this bike. I know a lot of guys tend to think that these bikes have, I don't know, like I say, the snappy throttle is what some guys were saying or jerky throttle. I think in the later bikes, they got something right with these things. I don't know, maybe they changed something up, but I can tell you that with this throttle, this bike is plenty smooth. And it's on par as far as snappiness with some of the uh, parallel twin triumphs that I was riding, doing some reviews for you guys with. So she's in good company with that throttle, but I just wanted to illustrate that for you again. Not a paid endorsement, but I've got quick throttle on this Daytona also. Did the exact same thing. Uh, and I cannot wait for this girl to get back from her spa day because I miss riding this bike. But anyway, there you go. All right, now that's a wrap, idiots.